Hello, my name is Leslie Atherton and this is my story called Come to the Coast. Both locations painted onto the signpost were known to us. As usual, our instinct made the decision about the direction we selected. We took a chance and drove along the coastal road, the one that appeared slightly less travelled. The long winding road petered out into a footpath leading down to a barren and empty peninsula. The shores were neither sandy nor bright, but on the positive side neither was the road polluted with ice cream vans and waste bins. This was coastline, raw and untouched, and definitely not the commercialised beachfront that Ian had expected. I felt some guilt to my own relief, as his disappointment was transparently obvious. I'm getting out for a minute, take some photos, I said to Ian. Can you stop the car? He rolled his eyes a little, but stopped without pulling over. It didn't matter that he hadn't stopped at one of the few passing places. It was possible to see a very long distance along this completely empty coastline road. Want me to come with you? Ian asked as I tightened the laces on my walking boots. That was what his voice said, but his eyes said, leave me here to listen to the radio and eat my sandwich. No, it's OK, I won't be long. The grassy area leading out to the water wasn't too steeply sloped, but was precarious underfoot, the stones being wet from the outgoing tide. Be careful, Ian shouted, his mouth full of sandwich. He was already increasing the volume of radio too. Neil Diamond sang about blue jeans as I held onto the strap of the camera that perpetually hung around my neck. My totem, my friend, the tool of my trade. The rocks were slippery where the wetness remained, as green algae gathered and swelled and contracted, but the sharp shards of the slate-like rocks protruded from the stony beach, and those diagonal surfboards weren't for climbing. I had no option other than to reach the waves by remaining on the shingle and stones for as long as I could. We'd been driving for many fruitless hours, but after just a few minutes out of the car, my eyes created their usual shapes and forms. This bleak shoreline of ragged slate appeared as a tumble-down roof above the churning sea cottage, with its rock pool windows and sea foam curtains. Seeing what I usually wouldn't, I focused and clicked, focused and clicked, creating permanent images on my expensive vintage colour film. I moved nearer, pulled away, then lowered my body to a sparkling clear rock pool. As I sat on the golden brown rock, staring into the water and waiting for the re-emergence of the tiny crab I'd seen escaping under a stone, I was as much at home as if I was snuggled into my favourite, richly upholstered armchair. The sea transformed to a homely, tumble-down sea cottage with rock pool windows, sea foam curtains and green slate sofa. Ian sounded the car's horn, beckoning me back. "'I know where we went wrong earlier,' he shouted." The tourist area is only half an hour from here. Fancy an ice cream? I nodded. I left behind my imaginings and returned to the car.